I don't have sufficient time in today's talk to go into the details of that strategy. So allow me to touch on some of our investment strategies and financing strategies within the education sector. In the last 10 years, with the decline in Zimbabwe's economy, we have seen literally hundreds of thousands of people lose their employment and decline, declining the standards of living. That, of course, has impacted the ability of parents and guardians to pay for school fees for children. And to counter that, uh, we have devised a policy that we define as the Basic Education Assistance Module, which seeks to target the poorest in society and pays for the uh, school fees of people identified by local communities as being unable to uh, attend school because of poverty. Uh, the, the same fund pays for all uh, the grade seven examination fees and uh, that is now being expanded into the secondary sector to ensure that all children who pass the examinations are in fact able to to write all our public examinations. Uh, we have three major public examinations, grade seven examinations written when children attain the age of 12, O-level examinations for children who attain the age of 16, and A-level, which is designed to be a tertiary qualification for children, uh, which is written in the year they turn 18. I've also established in conjunction with uh, our partners in the international community and educational transition fund which has mobilized some 52 million dollars in the last two years. The focus of that has been to uh, restore uh, textbook to pupil ratios, acceptable textbook to pupil ratios. Our ratios had dropped uh, to uh, at the, the shocking level of one textbook on average for 15 pupils. In the course of the last 18 months, uh, we have addressed the situation at, at primary school level and have used this fund to get at primary school level textbook pupil ratios that back to one to one. And this year, we are focused on secondary school textbook procurement programs. And our intention is by the end of this year to restore textbook pupil ratios to one to one in six core subject areas. We also have um, specific uh, public sector investment programs to, to look at the environment in which children work. This provides funds for the construction of government schools. Uh, tied into that, we have a schools rehabilitation program, and we have a per capita and tuition grants which are designed specifically to look at learning materials. Uh, for, for children. Let me turn in, in conclusion to look at ICT and the opportunities for ICT and if I may draw on the analogy used by my Kenyan colleague. One of the great advantages that we face in Zimbabwe is that whilst we have had uh, the shocking decline in, in investment in the education sector in the last two decades and the resultant uh, uh, decline in the levels of ICT found in classrooms. We now are presented with a great opportunity in that we believe that we can now leapfrog, leap, leapfrog uh, technology and we now have a major emphasis on the application of ICT at a variety of different levels within the education ministry. The first is in the context of the education management information systems within the ministry. Our existing data identification, collection, processing, generation and dissemination and, in, and evaluation mechanisms uh, had all but broken down uh, when I took office. And we are now engaged in program working very closely with UNESCO and and other partners to extend an education management information system uh, to all of our nearly 8,000 schools within the country. Um, 
and critically to then integrate that uh, which is obviously primarily administrative in Outlook with uh, programs to computerize the, the learning environment. In, in this regard, we are paying particular attention to a comprehensive review and reform of our curriculum. Our curriculum was last reviewed comprehensively as far back as 1986, and we're now in the process of completely revamping our curriculum development unit in the capital Harare, and looking at the integration of ICT in the teaching of all subjects. We're working very closely with the Open Society Institute, and in particular with George Soros, uh, who has come in with funding to assist us in this program. And we are also working closely with Apple uh, in the use of iPod and podcast technology. Uh, what we have in mind is uh, the objective of reaching even the most remote rural schools where there isn't perhaps internet access or electricity. And, uh, what we are planning on implementing initially is a, a pilot program to take um, iPods into classrooms with new specialized technology to project uh, images onto walls using solar technology. This, of course, is in its infancy, uh, but we, we see it as an opportunity to take ICT and computer technology generally into classrooms in even the most uh, remote schools. We are also working very closely with the private sector in other fields, in ICT and, and also in the financing of education. One of the strengths of the Zimbabwe uh, education system is that it has a very strong private sector uh, aspect to its education. We have many uh, church-based mission schools and many private schools uh, that provide a top quality education and in fact, sadly, have benefited um, many Western countries rather than Zimbabwe and even our neighbors, uh, South Africa and, and uh, Botswana, have benefited from the children generated by these schools. But we see these schools as providing us with uh, the opportunity to um, engage in cutting edge technologies which can then influence the, the government sector. Uh, tied into that, we have a specific program to rehabilitate certain uh, government schools uh, working in a triple P arrangement, public-private partnership arrangement, to target government schools to rehabilitate them and to place in those schools talented disadvantaged children uh, which will have access to the most up-to-date uh, computer technology. In conclusion, of course, we, we have many uh, challenges. I think in many respects our greatest challenge is financial. When we worked with the, the World Bank last year uh, and UNICEF in analyzing our education system, what was established as unique in the Zimbabwean education sector was the passion for education, uh, which is very evident in not just teachers, uh, but also parents, guardians, and, and children. Uh, that passion, we are told, is not found, is, 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 is rather rare elsewhere. And, and so our challenge is not so much in uh, generating that passion or that desire, our greatest challenge is in financing. In this regard, I'd like to leave you with a challenge, and I spoke about this uh, with the Regional Director for Africa of UNESCO during the, the coffee break. She made the point that uh, African countries generally uh, are doing their bit, are allocating very high percentages of their budget towards the education sector. And she raised the question, what more can be done? And I believe that that needs to be directed more to the international community. Uh, in the Zimbabwean context, there's no doubt in my mind that our inclusive transitional government is doing all in its power uh, to channel adequate um, money towards the education sector. I know that that effort is certainly being met by parents and guardians in, Zimbabwean, in, in Zimbabwe who have had to 
dig deep to assist government during this time of economic turmoil to keep our schools functioning. Sadly, though, uh, the contribution of the international community, whilst welcome, I believe falls far short of what we need to do if the Millennium, the millennium uh, Development Goals are to be achieved in 2015. When I see the amount of money which is spent on wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, when I see the amount of money which is being spent to bail out uh, countries such as, as Greece, and when I compare that to the amount of money that the international community spends in the education sector in Africa generally, and especially in Zimbabwe, I believe that there is far more that should be done uh, if these uh, development goals are, are to be achieved. But despite these challenges, uh, the government of Zimbabwe, I believe, has demonstrated its commitment to promoting and facilitating the provision of a, a high quality and, and relevant education for all. But clearly we can't achieve those goals without close cooperation, and that is why a conference like this is so important. Siobonga. Thank you.